Rams of the NFC and Ed Biles uh, taking the place of Bum Phillips in Houston. His first game as head man. Of course, he grew up uh, in the Oiler organization as an assistant after some uh, 25 years in football. And Ray Malavasi, Merlin Olsen, was booed when he was introduced to this Anaheim Stadium crowd. I think a reaction to the Freddie Dreyer incident. Some real similarities between these two coaches, Dick. They're both uh, former head coaches defensively for their teams and inherited uh, uh, the head job in uh, relatively uncomfortable circumstances. Malavasi taking over in the uh, third game of the preseason when George Allen was fired. And of course, Eddie Biles taking over for the very popular uh, Bum Phillips. Interesting, too, that they both got winning teams, and that's, you'd say that's great, but it's kind of tough to follow a winning coach, and both of these men have had to follow very winning coaches. Well, the Rams won the toss, so they're the victor already, and we'll receive to our left, wearing the white, Los Angeles, in the Houston blue, the Oilers across the way. That'll mean Tony Frisch will tee it up. Duck in some scores. A final Miami beat St. Louis 20 to 7. Atlanta over New Orleans 27 to nothing. And of course, Atlanta, Atlanta replaced the Los Angeles Rams champions last year. Tony Frisch will tee it up at the 35-yard line. There are the officials today. Ben Dreith, the referee, his crew of Messrs. Myers, Williams, Reynolds, Wedge, Wart, and Millette. Tony Fritsch had a perfect preseason, Dick. Uh, certainly an outstanding job by the little elf. He told me he's finally broken in a new kicking shoe. Had that old one for nine years. He said it was finally wearing out. I had to go to a new show, but he said, he patted it affectionately. He said, but this little shoe is being good for me. <laughs> <laughs> he was the most accurate field goal kicker in the league last year and second best all time. Deep to return, Drew Hill, and he's all alone. No one within 20 yards of Hill. 69,000, a sellout in Anaheim, and the 1981 season underway. Rich to the one, Hill in treble. Henry Childs at tight end by way of New Orleans and Washington. Bird Panky for Doug France at left tackle. Hill, Stahl, and Hera, all pro bowlers, and Jackie Slater made some of the all-pro teams. A great offensive line. First down from the 30-yard line. Tyler crunched at the 33. It'll be second down and seven. Stadium in Pittsburgh. Steelers behind Terry Bradshaw's 41-yard toss to Jim Smith have taken the lead back from the Kansas City Chiefs late in that ball game. Steelers are out in front 33 to 30. Let's go back to Anaheim. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olson. Second down and seven. The Rams first possession, second play of the game. Pat Hayden to throw from his 33. Incomplete. He was shooting for Preston Denard at the 44 through behind him. It'll be third and seven. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olson in Anaheim second game of the doubleheader here on NBC and we welcome you to Southern California on a beautiful day. Beautiful, sunny, bright day. Defensively for the Oilers, veteran Elvin Bethay, new middle guard, Kennard replacing Cole Bandy Doris, the other end. The linebackers, a great group of Brazil. Bingham, their leading tackler, eight straight years, Hunt and Washington. Wilson and Stemrick at the corners, Vernon Perry and Mike Reinfeld at safety. Third and seven from the Ram 33. First possession of the game. in the pattern. Tyler at the 50, 30. He's all the way for a touchdown. Tatum's first completion of the season, 67 yards. 
Tyler, watch this. A little drop-off pass to the outside. Tyler gets out of a block or a tackle there by Drake Bingham, 54. Miller coming in to cut down the defender, and then he just outlegs number 37, Reinfeldt, into the end zone. Does his little dance. Frank Corral to kick it up. And it is good. So the Rams on third and seven on their first possession get a 67-yard touchdown play from Hayden to Wendell Tyler, crosstown rivals USC to UCLA. One of the question marks about this Houston Oiler team is their ability of that defensive secondary to utilize their speed to handle someone like Wendell Tyler. Last week, J.C. Wilson beaten several times by Doug Donnelly. And I know one of Eddie Miles' concerns is, is that secondary. They're a good secondary. They've been together a long time, but they're not the fastest group around. And, of course, if you can't get pressure on a quarterback, you give him time to throw, he's going to beat you anyway. On that particular play, Hayden had all the time in the world. And uh, the play downfield, and you see it so often, Merlin, where the aggressive defense actually blocked each other out of the play. There were three Oilers, all with a chance alone to tackle Tyler, but they actually were their own worst enemies. Two of the linebackers knocking each other off. Bingham had a hold of Tyler. Looked like he would take him down. One of the outside linebackers, I believe Washington, bumped him and knocked him off the tackle. Corral to kick off for the Rams, leading 7-0. With just a minute and a second gone, Tullis and Roach is deep for Houston. One of the reasons that Bingham is having trouble tackling is because he's got a broken finger and he's got a cast on that hand. That might have had an impact there. High end over end. Roaches two yards deep. 20. 30 and out of bounds. Frank Corral, the kicker, knocked him out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Good return by little Carl Roaches from Texas A&M. Here comes Ken Stabler. His big running backs, Rob Carpenter, Earl Campbell, the leading rusher in the league three straight years. Burrow back after an injury in 80. Mike Renfro on the tight end, Mike Barber, Dave Casper on the bench. Offensive line, all pro Leon Gray, John Schumacher after two years of injuries. Veteran Carl Mock over the ball with Fisher and Towns, the blockers on the right side. Uh, there is a weakness, deck on that offensive unit. Would probably be in the depth of that offensive line. Campbell playing fullback that shoot there instead of halfback, and he gets the first carry and gains three. Running into a Ram defense, it stacks up this way. Youngblood and Cody Jones, the ends with Mike Fanning and Larry Brooks in the middle. Jim Youngblood, no relation to Jack. Carl Eckern for Hacksaw Reynolds, and George Andrews replaces Brzezinski on the right side. Fine back four. Thomas and Perry, two ball hawks. Johnson had a great rookie year out of Texas last year, and they're calling Nolan Cromwell All-World. I agree. <laughs> I don't send him to a higher league the way he's been playing, even in the summer. He had three more interceptions. Third and seven. Campbell slamming to the 45-yard line and a first down and very nearly picking up a piling on penalty. Pat Thomas made the tackle. Eddie Biles talks about a new Houston offense, but with a man like number 34, Earl Campbell, in your backfield, you've got to get him the ball. Tremendous quick acceleration and great vision. He knows how to find the hole. He knows how to get into it. And once he's into the secondary, he is devastating. Two carries, 18 yards for Campbell, who has gained over 5,000 yards in just three years in the NFL. Now to the eye with Carpenter, the up back. Stabler's first throw. And he's going long for Renfro. Broken up nicely by Pat Thomas. Renfro from TCU. Thomas played at questions that we will ask today and hopefully find an answer to is can Ken Stabler find the timing with his receivers after just a week and a half of work? It's difficult enough to get that timing during a full training camp period. Stabler had not been throwing the ball. He was retired. He's back in uniform. He's throwing it through pretty well last week, but can he keep it up here today against a very tough defensive backfield? With interesting numbers on him last year, Merlin, he completed more passes than any year in his career, and yet threw for less touchdowns, only 13. He threw his highest number of interceptions ever. That, that was the damaging number. Second down and 10 at the Houston 45, almost an 11-man line. Carpenter, cut down at the 49. It'll be third and six Houston. Carpenter from Miami of Ohio. Youngblood and Cromwell made the tackle. Rams lead. 7-0 here. Now let's go for an update. Brian Gumbel. 
All right, Dick, at Three Rivers, the Chiefs have taken the lead back from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mix up on the handoff between Bradshaw and Thornton. Paul Howard comes up with it. And 72 yards later, the Chiefs move out in front of the Steelers by a score of 37-33. That with only 159 left. Dick? So, possible upset, Chiefs at Pittsburgh. Here at third and seven, Stabler out of the backfield. Hit Ronnie Coleman. Good pass at the Ram 47. It looks as if it had first down ticketed, but uh, no luck as Coleman could not wrap it up. Rod Perry on the coverage. Coleman, a specialist uh, that they insert into the ball game traditionally on third down situations, a very dependable receiver, could not handle that one. Cliff Parsley, who enjoyed his best season last year, averaging 40.7 a kick. And he'll be kicking to Ivory Sully and Leroy Irvin. Irvin on the near side. That putting average for the Houston Oilers, 29.9 yards in the preseason. A very disappointing average. Short kick. Irvin at the 21. He's got some running room. 30. 38-yard line. Uh, the Rams special teams have looked very good in the early going on the kickoff and now the punt return. A 30-yard kick and a 17-yard return. The Oilers figure to be pinned in deep. Instead, they wind up with a ball out at their own 34. The Oilers defensive line, the play, Kennard and Doris. We showed you these gentlemen before, but here they are again, the linebackers and the back four. 7-0 Rams, first quarter, 11 and a half minutes left. Hayden, great protection. Kennard juggles and drops at the 38 of Houston. Andy Doris puts the pressure on Hayden. One of the tests of a quarterback is to see how long he'll hang on to that football before he throws it. Hayden, under pressure, waited until the last possible second to let Denard find the opening in that secondary. He got the ball to him, but I think Denard had a feeling that someone was coming right at his head. Mike Reinfeld had a, had a beat on him, and I think he was hearing footsteps a little bit on that one. Bravo 34. Casey just joined us. 67-yard touchdown pass. Hayden to Wendell Tyler, giving the Rams an early 7-0 lead. Draw to Tyler, and he slams out to the 46-yard line. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Vic, am I mistaken, or is Tyler hanging on to that football a little bit better? Looks like he's tucking it away. He's had the habit of carrying the football like a loaf of bread. And we'll keep an eye on him today to see if he's still doing that, but in the, at least in the dangerous area near the line of scrimmage, he was hanging on to that one. I'll give you a second peek at that. Now watch the way he puts the ball away here. The coaches have been working with him. He's still carrying it rather loosely, but does pull it in tight right in the uh, contact area. Let's see if he does that in the open field. If he has, he's licked one of his major problems. Third down, a short three. during the winter and a week later the Rams acquired Childs who was a home economic major at Kansas State. Fred Dreyer, his influence positive or negative in uniform? I gotta feel it's negative right now even though uh, Freddie has been a very strong leader for this team. Rams with the first down at the Houston 47. Misdirection and it's Cullen Bryant. At the 42-yard line of the Oilers, short game. Colin is 238 pounds. He's a weightlifting fanatic. I, he has the the body of a of a linebacker or a lineman, and absolutely one of the nicest people you'd meet uh, in a football uniform. We'd like to welcome those of you who have enjoyed a great game back in the East. Baltimore Colts upset New England 29-28. We're at Anaheim Stadium. The Rams scoring early on their first possession on a 67-yard touchdown, Hayden to Tyler, and the Rams have the ball second and five at the Oiler 41. Wendell Tyler stopped inside the 40. Darrell Hunt spearheading the charge, number 50 of the Oilers. 54, Greg Brigham, the leading tackler produced in eight straight years, also in on the play. We were talking about the great build of Cullen Bryant. I think perhaps the finest build on the field belongs to Ken Hill, number 72. Six foot five, 260 pound guard. You see him right there in the middle of the action, not getting much of a piece of anybody there. 
but that's an unusual shot. He usually has a, a shoulder or a head on somebody all day long. Third and two. Waddy in motion. Blocked at the line of scrimmage by 71 Ken Kennard. Of course, that's one of the things that has plagued Pat Hayden because he is short in height, 5'11". Sometimes he can't get it over those giant linemen, and Kennard, although only 6'2", timed his fly swat move perfectly. Kennard able to get that one knocked down, but one of the things that did happen on that play, which is an indication of the value of Henry Childs, Childs was about 35, 40 yards down the field, opening up the way for those wide receivers to come in underneath. Ray Malavese says that Charles is the most valuable addition to his Ram team in 1981. Frank Corral, the only man who punts and plays kicks in the NFL, slides that one to the far sidelines. Out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 11-yard line. So the Oilers have the football for the second time. Good kick by Corral. 29-yard punt. By the way, Hayden's touchdown to Tyler, which was actually a short pass turned into a long gainer by Tyler, was the second longest touchdown play for Hayden in his career, 68 yards being the longest ever for the Rhodes Scholar from the University of Southern California. Burrow left, Renfro right. See Lionel Taylor talking with Hayden. Campbell and Carpenter behind Stabler. Campbell. It's about where you'd see a baseball player break up a double play. How'd you like to have Campbell rolling into you on a 6-4-3? There are a lot of eyes uh, on number 55, Carl Eckern, out on the field. Eckern, of course, replaced, replaced Hacksaw Reynolds, a great middle linebacker for so many years. And Eckern has earned the respect of all of his teammates with the kind of play you see right there. Quick reaction to the ball and a very hard and fierce tackle. Not a big middle linebacker, but great speed and a great nose for the football. If he can stay healthy, he's going to make some people forget Jack Reynolds. Second and seven. sidelines the all pro number 85 from Florida made the tackle we say it often but it's uh, it's a fact in the game of football you measure the aggressiveness and the tenacity of a defense often in their ability to pursue great job of pursuit by Jack Youngblood on that play I think uh, having Campbell on the field pumps a little of extra adrenaline into those defenses though you better be alert oh boy and how would you like to be Rod Perry and Pat Thomas solo on Earl Campbell? 5'9 and 170, and they, Campbell must look 390. Third and two. Campbell again. Met. Eckern 55 and Youngblood 53. Shoulder to shoulder to stop Campbell short of the first down. Well, they stacked up the play. And there was Youngblood, too. That one looked better than it was because the Rams had a blitz on. And they had people blitzing right into the hole that Earl Campbell was coming up into. But still a very aggressive play by the Ram defense. 69,000 to sell out. Artisan Ram crowd. They send back two men to return Parsley's boot. Drew Hill joins Leroy Irvin. Irvin on the near side. Ball again. 48 yard punt, a good one by Parsley, no return. It's only the third time these two teams have played in the regular season. The other two contests in the Astrodome, and both won by the Rams. Two other games, preseason games, both of those also won by the Rams. So the Oilers are looking for their first win against the Ram organization. And Eddie Biles, of course, looking for his first win. New head coach, Tyler, reversing his field. He's got some blockers. 35, 40, and he ad lips his way to the 48-yard line. Wendell Tyler. It's very rare in, a, in this day and age to see a back reverse his field. It takes tremendous speed to be able to do that. That's exactly what Tyler did here. He got trapped for about a five-yard loss, came all the way 
way back. Now watch right at the end. Preston Denard gets right in front of Robert Brazil to give him that last four or five yards. Had to come all the way around. First down at the 48 of Los Angeles. Bryant gets three yards to the 49 of Houston. So Tyler has accounted for 94 yards already. Now let's go to New York and Bryant. Dick at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. The Chiefs have completed their upset of the Steelers. This is Bradshaw trying to drive the Steelers with less than a minute left, looking for Stallworth. Gary Barbaro picks it off. The Chiefs were able to run off the clock, and they beat the Steelers 37-33. Dick? Rams ball, Houston 49-yard line. Second down, seven. Confusion and setting up in the backfield. of Denard, bobbled in the backfield by Reinfeldt, and then into the arms of Vernon Perry. Timing thrown off on the pass. Pass thrown to Denard. Watch Denard in the pattern. Ball comes to him high, and he'll tip it right here. It'll be tipped again now a second time. This is like the tip drill you practice. Reinfeldt right into the hands of Vernon Perry. Of course, we saw Perry pick off four of those against the San Diego Chargers in a playoff game. Does an outstanding job of picking some extra yardage there. 35-yard return, Vernon Perry. He played with Brazil and Walter Payton at Jackson State. Stabler. Carpenter punished as coming up to make the hit for the Rams was Nolan Cromwell. Well, you can't cover any better from that safety spot. Coming up to pick off the running back. A good pass defense is a combination of aggressive pass rush, limiting the amount of time the quarterback has to throw, and good coverage, not only by the defensive backs, but also by the linebacker. And one of the toughest patterns to cover is a pattern out of the backfield. You can't do it any better than Nolan Cromwell did it there. Two-yard gain, second down, eight. Seven, nothing, Rams lead it. Those of you have watched the upset, Kansas City beating Pittsburgh 37-33. Houston's ball, Earl Campbell battling his way to the Ram 32-yard line. The Rams scored on their first possession. Pat Hayden hitting halfback Wendell Tyler, who ran 67 yards for a touchdown. The Rams were moving again when Hayden was intercepted by Vernon Perry. Perry returned 35 yards to this current situation where Houston looks at third down and about seven at the Ram 33. On that last play, Dick, uh, Campbell felt himself being trapped, faked a little pass back there. <laughs> he actually did throw two passes, one for a touchdown last year, so I guess it's not a, a fake without some, something behind him. And it came in the opener at Pittsburgh when Campbell threw for a touchdown. Stabler under pressure, had a man wide open, but had to deliver the ball too quickly to Ronnie Coleman. To the Rams gamble, there were more blue shirts back toward the goal line than there were white shirts, but Stable had no time to throw an accurate pass. An all-out blitz by the Rams. Look how many are coming right up the middle. Two of them coming hard. Linebackers coming. If you don't get to the quarterback on that kind of a blitz, it's all over. But Stabler is not a mobile quarterback. That's one of his problems. They were able to get to him on that play. Tony Frisch is going to try a long field goal of 50 yards. Frisch. Out of the hole to Reinfeldt. behind the Patriots John Smith Frisch nails one from 50 yards 7-3 Rams here's the setup on that field goal by Frisch Merlin bad snap now watch watch the way Reinfeldt gets this ball down now the whole timing of the kick had to change amazing that Frisch was able to get it and nail it just barely over the crossbar you see how he's leading I don't blame him for being excited he's a little cheerleader out there <laughs> That's how he reacted in Wembley Stadium before 140,000 soccer fans when Austria upset England about 10 years ago, and he scored two goals. And he's still perfect for the year. He has yet to miss a field goal or an extra point. Kicks this one high, fairly 
short down on a wing. Ivory Sully at the 18. Out to the 27-yard line. So Frisch has kicked them to both corners. High. You can see he puts the ball. He, he likens field goal kicking or place kicking to the corner kick in soccer. He said that's been the great training for him in this game. I've never seen a kicker who has better control of the football than Tony Frisch. I've told the story on the air once or twice, but I was out on the field in Dallas when they were going to play the Cowboys, and he said, do you want to see me hit the crossbar? Hit the crossbar? He said, do you want to see me hit the upright? He hit the upright. I couldn't believe it. First down, Rams leading 7-3 at their 28. Well, there's some smacking going on as Gerald Thomas, number 33, just in the lineup for the first time, 5-10 and 235. The freshman at UCLA transferred to San Jose State. Gets about three yards. Thomas was used in the next to last game last year against Dallas and rushed for 147 yards. Came back the next week and gained 144 against Atlanta. Many feel he has the potential to be a big star. Eddie He'll be Biles, big, all right? <laughs> yes, yeah, he is big. Eddie Biles, very impressed with Darrell Thomas. Irv Pankey replacing the injured Doug France at left tackle uh, having some problems. Gives us a chance to update the scoreboard for you. With the Oilers 7-3 in just a moment. No. Thank you. Anaheim Stadium sold out 69,000 fans. Warm day in the 80s. Rams with the ball and leading the Houston Oilers 7-3. Ball at the 31-yard line. Two minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Billy Waddy to the right, Preston Denard to the left, Cullen Bryant and Wendell Tyler behind quarterback Pat Hayden. Open, Waddy, did he have control? Yes, at the 49-yard line. Some of the Oiler coaches didn't think so across the way. J.C. Wilson on the coverage. One of the most controversial rules added to the roster this year is the possession rule now states that as long as you have two feet on the ground inbounds you have control in a reception but he didn't have control of the ball at that point he was stepping out of bounds we'd like to welcome those who've been watching seattle and cincinnati bengals with a great comeback down 21 nothing beat the seahawks 27 21 here at seven to three rams leading houston wendell tyler Runs into a sea of blue, and Vernon Perry from a safety spot at the gold trade at the backfield rides him down shy of the 50. Number 77, Doug France, into the lineup. Uh, he was hurt on that last play. He's been out a good deal of the year. Has had shoulder trouble. An all-pro, one of the most physical defensive, offensive players in the NFL. You see him using his hands as they're allowed to do now. There is, a, there is a big question about the strength of his shoulder. Two operations on that rotator cuff. He says he's ready to play. We'll find out. Call it midfield. Second down. Call it 10. Widespread. You'd think they'd pass out of this, but they don't. Tyler is sweeping right. Tackled forward across the 45-yard line. Oh, that was a solid crack. You can hear the crowd go, ooh. And we're going to go to Brian Gumbel in New York. Dick, if you and Merlin thought that Waddy catch was questionable, watch this one. It happened in Denver. This is Morton going up top to Rick Upchurch. You're supposed to have both feet in bounds for a score. Watch Upchurch's. The left one's on the line. The right one never does reach the end zone. Touchdown anyway. It's 7-6 Oakland. Dick? All right, Brian, thank you. I guess some of those officials would like to have the luxury of watching our instant replay. They don't make many mistakes, but uh, unfortunately we catch them when they do. Goldman in the game for the first time for the Rams. And Baker. Baker from Jacksonville State applies the first sack on the Rams Hayden and the man he beat number 77 Doug oh. France whom we were just taking a look at Baker the designated rusher coming from that right side on France as we said has missed a good deal of the play this year just manages to bust inside gets up, gets by not only France but also number 72 Hill and dumps, dumps the quarterback rather unceremoniously on his behind a kick to Roaches at the 10 for Houston. Corral will deliver around the Ram 38. For the sidelines and out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Timeout here in Anaheim. 
34 seconds remain in the first quarter. The home team, the Rams, leading the Oilers 7-3. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen, Anaheim Stadium. Uh, the beard now belongs not just to Merlin Olsen or Little House in the Prairie, but to Father Murphy. Yes, it does, Dick. And, uh, the good father is working every day. <laughs> <laughs> I know you he are. He had a busy week. No wonder you're not answering your phone calls. <laughs> Father Murphy, the new NBC series, and from all the critics' reviews, going to be a big hit this fall on NBC, starring Merlin Olsen. Stabler to Campbell. The 21-yard line his ankles 85 Jack Youngblood final seconds of this first quarter and that may well be the last play Earl Campbell powerful thighs his thighs well 34 in his back that's how big one thigh is <laughs> for Earl Campbell 34 inch waist we can identify with the one thigh hmm. and some of the guys that have to tackle him how about Rod Perry he's about 170 pounds Sneaks, sneaks, sneaks up to 5'8". <laughs> that's right. But he's a very physical guy for that side. The gun sounds. That's the end of the first quarter. The Rams scoring on a 67-yard pass Hayden to Tyler. And the Oilers on a 50-yard field goal by Frisch. Dick Kenberg with Merlin Olsen. Anaheim Stadium. We go to the second quarter. The inaugural for these two teams. Of course, the AFC scoring a big advantage over the NFC last year. Right on through the Super Bowl. Trail the Rams 7 3, first down at the 21 for Houston. Earl Campbell meets Jim Youngblood and Carl Eckert. Actually, a second down play. That was second and seven, and he lost a yard. It'll be third and eight. Lots of turnovers in these Ram linebackers, but uh, not much loss of quality. Jim Youngblood, number 53 continues to improve. We talked earlier about Ecker and George Andrews, number 52, fine young player on the other side, appears to round out some real strength and some future strength for this Ram defense. Rams go to five defensive backs, Leroy Irvin, number 47 in. Joe Harris, 51. Boy, Campbell almost shredded his way into the clear and was tripped up at the 23. Rams looking pass and the Oilers try to hit him with a quick pop up the middle. First quarter statistics as the Oiler kicking team comes on. Total Rams obviously uh, not playing the Oilers by more than the scoreboard would indicate. One of the questions that we'd asked earlier, would Ken be able to, Ken Stabler be able to get his timing with his receivers? That two yards of passing would say apparently not in the first quarter. Leroy Irvin deep at the Ram 35. Ten man rush. Parsley. Short kick. That's a returner right there. 45, 50, 45. He's all the way to the 27-yard line. Anytime you kick one that low without hand time, you give the receiving team time to set up the return. They got it there, and Irvin took advantage of it. Leroy Irvin from Kansas, a third-round pick last year, puts the Rams in scoring position. We'll break for this word. Greg Bingham, number 54, that heavy cast on a broken finger, right hand. Middle backer for the Houston Oilers. The Rams at the 28-yard line of Houston after a 27-yard punt return. A reverse to Childs. Oh, was that well read? Elvin Bethay, the veteran defensive end, would not be fooled and was right there waiting for Childs. And Instead of a possible big gainer, the Rams uh, lose a yard on first down. But they a dinosaur. He's been around years and years. He just forced that play to wait. And he knew that if he got enough time, that even though Childs might get away, there'd be a lot of blue shirts out there to help him lay on the ground. Number 27, Greg Stemmerich. And number 50, Daryl Hunt, both over there to do just that. But they has been around playing excellent football years and years. He goes out on the pass downs now, but he's still a great player on the run. Second down a long 10. And it's Bryant on a trap up the middle to the 23-yard line. No flag thrown. Now, the interesting thing Eddie Biles has done, and Merlin, you certainly can appreciate this because as a family man, uh, there are times when uh, all athletes really uh, wish that their wives could be with them. He's allowing each veteran player uh, to bring the wife on a trip, one each game, and it's Alvin Bethay's turn uh, this first game of the season. 
We talked about the cast on Bingham's hand, 54. Maybe he'll get, uh, maybe he'll get to bring his wife next week if he can continue to play like that. Dick. So that'll be the reward of the yeah. veterans for the Oilers this year. Perhaps. I think it's a good choice on the part of Eddie Biles. Bryant cuts inside the grain, and he's close to a first down at the 18-yard line. This may require a measurement. Now I believe he's got it. We talked about the physical nature of Cullen Bryant. Started his career as a defensive back, and I can remember he came into camp. He's one of the quietest people you've ever seen. He ran kickoffs. Never asked for any kind of special treatment of any kind. And finally got a chance because of injuries to carry the football and has become one of the steadiest and one of the most reliable fullbacks in the NFL. Used as a defensive back and he returned kickoffs. Has three for touchdowns and they were all runs that won games for the Rams uh, seven, eight years ago. Hayden on first down. Plenty of time. Intercepted. It's Demrick at the 30 and knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Greg Stemrick. Oh, he was waiting in the weeds for that one. Well, if ever you've seen a defensive back hide and just wait for that ball to be thrown, you got the shot right here. Hayden with hours to throw the football. Thought Childs was open, but watch it right here. Stemmerich just slips in front of him and then scoots up that sideline for excellent yardage. Hayden has had real problems here in the preseason for the Rams through 13, no, 10 interceptions. Three touchdowns, 10 interceptions. That's a lousy number of interceptions for that number of touchdowns. And that's his second today. The first one led to a field goal, and now the Oilers have the ball again. Hayden with backup quarterbacks, Kemp and Rutledge. He's thrown one touchdown pass, but two interceptions now. The Oilers Stemrick, a 38-yard return out to the Houston 44. Stabler to Campbell, 45. Oh, just running through Rams to the 45 of Los Angeles. Earl Campbell, and that's something Ed Biles said he was going to do this year. He wants Campbell to catch between 30 and 40 passes this season. That's his master plan. Nine yards on that one. Earl Campbell caught 10 passes in the preseason. Obviously being successful. Total offense for the two teams. Still tremendously one-sided for the Rams. But they're not that far out on the scoreboard. Houston with a chance here to get things more than even. It's 7-3 Los Angeles as the Oilers parlayed the first interception into a long 50-yard field goal. And now on second and one, Stabler is really hit. Renfro with a catch. talked about a quarterback being willing to stand in until the last second. You see what happens when they do, but you also see what they can do when they'll wait that extra second for the receiver to clear. Fine pattern by Renfro, who runs disciplined routes, and an excellent pass by Stabler. 14 yards on the play, a first down. Oilers just outside the Ram 30. 10 minutes, 19 seconds left in the second quarter. 7-3, Los Angeles leads. the 30 27 yard line Earl Campbell you know Don Klosterman thought back when Campbell was a graduating senior that he had Campbell wrapped up Klosterman and John McKay coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers close friends McKay in Tampa Bay owned that first draft pick and Klosterman said maybe I got too cocky in fact he loaned uh, Campbell his car on a trip out to Los Angeles and says even gave him one of his little cassettes he says Earl still owes me a cassette from those days back in 78. Instead, Houston made the deal, and are they glad? Stabler threw it away, and a flag is down. Telecast presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited like Mo Towns, number 76, got a hold of Jack Youngbud from the backside and will be ticketed. Towns uh, has really matured as a defense, as an offensive lineman, but uh, is still a bit of a question mark. Holding, holding, holding. 
offense, number 76. Towns from Missouri, a number one pick in 77. Let's reintroduce that offense for you. Mark at center, Schumacher and Fisher are the guards, Gray and Towns at tackle. Tight end is Mike Barber. Burrow and Renfro are the wide men. Quarterback Stabler with the running backs Carpenter and Campbell. talked about the changes that he's made in this Houston offense. They're running uh, out of more normal sets this year, not using the two tight end offense that they used last year. They're featuring Campbell less in their game plan. They still wanted to run the ball, but they want to throw the ball more. They want to throw the ball more to their backs and wide receivers, spreading the offense, thereby making Campbell more effective. Third down 16, a fifth defensive back in for the Rams. Good protection for Stabler. Looking for Coleman and gets him at the 24-yard line. Leroy Irvin made the tackle. That's going to be short of the first down, but gets Frisch a lot closer to those uprights. A 13-yard play. And here comes the Austrian Frisch and company to try his second field goal. Connected on a 50-yarder in the first quarter. His longest ever 54. Kenny Stabler has thrown a couple of excellent passes in this drive, Dick. Has indeed. That one uh, took some real finesse, dropped it right in over the defender. Although Carpenter may be dusting himself off for quite a while on the sideline. Took a hit right after that. Fresh, who missed only five of 24 last year. This one will be 41 yards. who was four for four in the preseason has hit two long ones in the first half of the regular year. 50 yards, now 41. Timeout in Anaheim. The Oilers have used two interceptions to position themselves. Two field goals and trail by one. 81. It's as hard hitting. Tony Frisch kicks it off for the Oilers. Couple of field goals by Frisch. That's Drew Hill at the Ram five-yard line. Seven to six, the Rams lead it. Hill from Georgia Tech at the 6. 20. And knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Rookie Bill Kay from Purdue, number 22, made the hit. The Oilers, interestingly, have a total of 78 yards in offense in the first half, 73 yards in interception returns, and that's been the key for them getting on the board. If you're going to win, you have to take advantage of your opportunities. The Oilers have made their best advantage off those two interceptions, put six points on the board, keep themselves very tight this morning. Waddy far right, Miller wide left, and Tyler into the secondary, out to the 34-yard line. Eight yards for Wendell Tyler. He scored the Ram touchdown with just a minute gone in the game on a 67-yard pass and run. Hayden to Tyler. Yeah. Rams going right at the middle of that defense. Kit Kennard, number 71, being blocked by number 56, Doug Smith, who's gone in at center. Smith doing an excellent job of moving the big nose tackle out of there. You see that slam of the fist to the ground. He knows he was beaten. Second and short. Bryant hugging the football. Crosses the 40 with a ram first down. What is that stat on Bryant fumbling? He has fumbled only nine times in eight years, and that is almost a thousand chances to handle a ball. He's fumbled it away only nine times, fumbled only once all last year. That despite the fact he was the leading rusher, 807 yards, and leading pass receiver, 53 catches. I can remember when he couldn't catch the ball. Hayden on first down. Good protection. Almost intercepted by Robert Brazil. Two interceptions, and people forget about the touchdown. 
Well, the difference between that pass and the one you just saw completed by Stabler is Stabler looped the ball over the defender's head. Had about the same amount of room. Peyton trying to line that ball into Willie Miller, number 82, and Robert Brazil just had too long arms to allow that. Slapped it away, almost intercepted it. Second and 10 from the 41. Tyler. Boy, he did some fancy running to earn those yards out to the 48, just picking his way, sliding to the outside, and he gained about seven before Vernon Perry could stop him. Kind of unusual to see two quarterbacks on the field calling their own plays. We rarely get a chance to see that anymore. So many teams now calling the plays for their quarterbacks from the sideline. Got two pretty bright men in there. Aiden, the Rhodes Scholar, and Stabler, the sagacious veteran of the Oilers. Third and three. pleased by that 19-yard advance by Cullen Bryant. We talked about the running power of these two big backs today, but watch the agility here. Bryant sees the opening up inside and just accelerates. Does a fine bit of running. Looked like Earl Campbell on that run, didn't he? Almost seems unfair that a man who can run a 9-700 he also should weigh 238 pounds. Tyler corralled at the 31 after short yardage, maybe a yard or two. I think we'll see a lot of uh, offensive linemen in and out for the Rams today. Doug Smith, who's been in there at center, uh, we'll see some of France as well. The, uh, the Rams uh, believe that they need to alternate their people that are good enough to play, get them into that lineup, get them the playing time. Panky is, has had a bit of playing time now. Doug Smith is good enough to start. Bill Bain will be in and out of there as well. Brad Radkovich, the offensive line coach, is the man who's pioneered that philosophy for them. Hayden on a quick hitter, complete to Drew Hill, and a first down at the 22 of the Oilers. Hill, who caught 19 passes last year, had the best average of the Ram receivers, nearly 22 yards a catch. He's another sprinter, 5'9 and 170. I think one of the things you notice rapidly in looking down the rosters of these two teams, how much uh, superior depth that the Ram organization has to this Houston Oilers team and I think it's a it's a credit to Houston that they have been able to perform as well as they have over the last few years without the quality depth that they would like to have. Rams lead seven to six. Five minutes left in this first half. Gerald Thomas threw the ball right out of his own hand and then recovered at the 34 yard line. Merlin you talked about Wendell Tyler earlier and a careless manner in which he sometimes carries the ball. And Thomas almost did that and trying to get his balance through the ball away. Well, a tighter look at it. You see the pulling guards right there, Bain and Harris, 62 and 60. And right there, Jarrell Thomas trying to cut back, using the ball as kind of a little pendulum, a little weight to jerk himself back. Snapped it loose, and uh, that gentleman on the sideline, Ray Malavasi, obviously as unhappy about that as he was about the big run of Cullen Bryant a few minutes ago. 12-yard loss on first down, so second and 22 out of the 34 of the Oilers. Three wide receivers in the game. A draw to Bryant. And he's finally caught by Brazil. Mike Reinfeldt down at the 24-yard line, so a gain of about 10 for Bryant. Third and 12, Frank Correll loosening up along the sidelines. Mike Gooman, he's a good pass receiver. The second-year man from Penn State wearing 44 is in the backfield now. Bryant and Gooman. Drew Hill and Miller to the right. Denard to the left. Third and 12. Bryant wrestled out of bounds by Bingham, shy of the first down at the 18-yard line. A corral and the kicking team. And would figure will go in. Uh, earlier, Dick, that I can remember a time when Cullen Bryant couldn't catch the football. He literally had terrible hands when he first came to the Rams. Spent hours and hours 
actually went through the same process that Earl Campbell was going through right now. Elijah Pitts, the assistant coach for the Oilers, throwing to him every day after practice. That's how number 32, Cullen Bryant, developed his hands. He's become one of the most dependable receivers on this team. The Oilers would like to have Earl Campbell develop that same kind of technique for, the, for them. 35 yards away, and it is good. Frank Corral from 35, and the Rams build a four-point lead. Three minutes, 48 seconds remaining in the first half. Los Angeles 10, Houston 6. Drawing to a close, first half at Anaheim, 10-6 Rams. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. PPRC-TV, Channel 2, Houston. Frank Corral, who just kicked the 35-yard field goal, will kick it off to the Oilers, Roaches, and Tullis Deep. It's to Roaches at the four. And he stops shy of the 20-yard. Mike Gooman coming down hard, pressing uh, pressing Roaches, forcing him right into number 51, Joe Harris. Gooman, a good special teams player, very aggressive player, but it was really Harris who, uh, who put the stops to him with an assist there from Gooman. Well, you saw how well he stayed in his lane and didn't take the bite going too far outside. The play came to him. Discipline. Stabler, four for seven, 41 yards. Carpenter. Remember the great job he did in that San Diego playoff game two years ago? Almost out of a hospital bed. Could hardly walk the day before and help lead the Oilers who were crippled into a big victory against the Chargers. One of the big happy spots, bright spots, number 74, Leon Gray. Achilles tendon injury put him out last year, put him on injured reserve, and no one knew if he'd be able to come back. Well, that Achilles is holding up well. He says there's no pain. And he is playing some excellent football. And they run behind Gray. Earl Campbell with the ball. Appears as if he made the first down. George Andrews, first round pick from Nebraska a year ago for the Rams, made the tackle. The great concern because the offensive line is already thin. And had they lost Gray, had he not been able to come back and perform, you see him driving on number 76, Cody Jones there, they would have been even more desperately in trouble in that offensive line. They, as a result of his coming back strong, they at least anchor down that crucial backside position against those strong rushers at that right end position around the league. He had a real test. He came back against, against uh, Leroy Selman and then Harvey Martin the next week. I said, how was it? He said, well, I found out in a hurry. <laughs> this leg was going to hold up. Next Saturday, Merlin, NBC's baseball game of the week. Bennett Mind at Montreal and the surprising Cubs at Wrigley. And some of you will see the Yankees and the Red Sox. The Yankees were the new manager. Well, not so new. He was their manager before. Bob Lemon announced today as the manager, Gene Michael, has been fired. That's baseball next Saturday on NBC. Short of the first down, third and inches for Houston. Houston's coughed up the ball. The Rams at the Euler 21 when we return. Campbell, 34. Would appear that he's having trouble adjusting to that handoff. And again, that's something that would come automatically after Stabler has handed off enough times. But it was just a week and a half of practice. It's not as smooth as it should have been. Let's see if the Rams can take advantage of it. From the 21, it's Cullen Bryant. To the 18-yard line, and a flag goes down. Ken Kennard, 71, from Angelo State, who placed all-pro Curly Culp at that middle nose guard position, made the tackle. And it's against the Rams, apparently. That's their first penalty in the game. 
They had 31 penalties in the last two the last two preseason games. I think that's some kind of Ram record. Malavasi was just furious with his team, uh, furious with some officials too. But they've done a good job here of keeping it down in this ball game. That's the first they've been called for. Nothing makes the acid boil in the stomach of a coach more than that holding penalty on first down. Suddenly it's first and 20, especially after having the breakdown at the 21 yard line. Offense number 78. Jackie Slater, the right tackle, guilty of the hole. He's from Jackson State. Well, what a team that must have been. Walter Payton, Robert Brazil, Vernon Perry, Jackie Slater, all starters and stars in this league on that Jackson State team a few years ago. on that ball. Number 33, J.C. Wilson, has been beaten deep a number of times in the past few weeks, and I'm sure giving those receivers a little extra room. Two-minute warning. Rams will come back facing second and eight at the 19. Beautiful day in Southern California. The Rams and Oilers open the 81 season. It will be second and eight for the Rams at the Oiler 19. Jackie Slater ticketed with a holding call. Merlin talked with Jackie yesterday and ask him about use of the hands, and uh, we'll get that report from the offensive tackle in a couple of plays. Rams score quickly, one minute into the game on a 67-yard pass play. Hayden to Tyler. A couple of interceptions led to Oiler field goals of 50 and 41 by Frisch. Corral has kicked a 35-yard field goal hill in this quarter, and there's field goal range now, but Hayden looking for six. through the ball, but Arnold streaks into the open. And young Walt Arnold has done a fine job here for the Rams in the past few weeks, impressing a lot of people. Meanwhile, Frank Corral has kicked the extra point right down the middle. So Arnold, who was an outfielder in college, and he played the outfield well in Anaheim, six more for the Rams. Preceding announcement furnished as a public service by the National Football League. So the fumble by Campbell, recovered by Sully at the 21, and Hayden turns it into a touchdown, hitting Walt Arnold, a tight end, a 19-yard play. Tullis and Roach is deep. This is the rookie Tullis at the 2. 20 and 21-yard line. Good coverage by the Los Angeles Rams. Ivory Sully made the first hit. Scores around the National Football League. Surprises. The Chiefs beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh by four. Baltimore, another upset, edging New England. Miami hasn't lost yet this year. Won four in the summer, 27 at St. Louis. Cincinnati rallied to beat Seattle after the Seahawks were up 21-0. The Eagles beat the Giants 24-10. Finals, Dallas over Washington 26-10. New Orleans 27 nothing all the scores and highlights at halftime Stabler to throw deep down the middle for Renfro and he can't make the diving catch at the 48 yard line Pat Thomas there on the coverage Stabler showing a good arm on that laid it all the way in front of Renfro the kind of pass that must be thrown out front where there's no chance of interception Andrews and Eckern two linebackers go out Joe Harris Excellent on pass coverage, number 51. And Leroy Irvin, 47, defensive back in as the Rams play pass. Stabler. 
Hendricks all that experience. He knew that that ball belonged out of bounds. <laughs> Couldn't have done Campbell any good to get his hands on it with that many defenders right on top of it. Interesting contrast in the two defenses here. The Rams playing uh, four-man defense. Uh, Houston, one of the pioneers of the three-man defense, but now 21 to 28 teams in the NFL playing that three-man front, although Houston will go to a four-man rush on passing down. Big play on third and ten with a minute 40 left in the half. It's short, and Renfro comes back to catch it at the 48-yard line. Thomas had him covered. Stabler threw short, and Renfro then sing the ball while the defensive back had his head turned. Thomas upset with himself. But again, the experience of Ken Stabler showing through knew that with the defensive back in perfect position, the only way to get that one with a hope was to throw it behind and hope that Renfro could cut across Thomas's heels, which he did beautifully. Fine, fine hands. Good catch. Timeout is called with 129 left in this half. Stabler conversing with Eddie Biles. He'll be 50 next month. Will Biles is 29th year in football, a native of Reading, Ohio. Went to the Miami, Ohio University, where his coach was Tara Parsegian. He said, I was the right guy at the right time. Paul Brown, I was able to be influenced by his teachings at that university. And then Woody Hayes was there as a, when he was a freshman player and Parsegian, the varsity coach. That is pretty good tutorship. Talking about his coaches, I think one of the most interesting moves he made, of course, Bump Phillips leaving to take that uh, job in uh, in New Orleans, and the man he went to get to, to hire as his defensive coordinator, former New Orleans head coach, Dick Nolan. Another former head coach went to become uh, the defensive coordinator of a team whose uh, offensive coordinator has been hired to be the new head coach in Washington. Who was that, Dick? San Diego Chargers hired Jack Party. Absolutely. Very, uh, very unusual. Eddie Biles, and he's kept the tradition. He's got the cowboy boots. I don't know if those are lizard or crocodile. I don't think Bum left too many things in Houston, <laughs> except some broken hearts. Oh, he left some friends there. He did indeed. One, 129 left in this first half. Stabler from the Ram 48. Great protection. Got a man open. Dave Casper, first appearance of the game. Johnny Johnson on the coverage. Stabler couldn't quite get it to his big tight end. I believe that's the first pass he's thrown to his tight ends today. And, of course, last year, both tight ends, Casper uh, and Barber, well over 50 catches, uh, 100 catches between the two of them. But with the changes that uh, they've made in this Houston offense, the tight ends will not be as productive, will not be used as much as they were last year. Casper, a pro bowler the last five years, stays in the game. Burrow left, Renfro right, Casper the tight end on the right side. Campbell and Carpenter behind Stabler. Jones on a stunt who came in cleanly. Jones from San Jose State. He was the man who replaced number 74 a few years ago when Merlin Olson decided to retire. And now is almost an equally tough task. He's been asked to replace number 89, Fred Dreyer, at their right defensive end position. Over the middle, Carpenter, and no penalty flag. Joe Harris had his hands all over the receiver. No call. Uh, draw play that was stopped so beautifully by Cody Jones. You, you get lucky sometimes as a defensive lineman and you'd love to have a stunt called right into that draw play because obviously they're going to let you go. And when you do hit it right, it's quite a quite a bit of excitement. Of course, I'm not so sure I'd want to go in there on Earl Campbell. I'd rather have a smaller back to tackle. <laughs> that's right. That's no treat. Less than a minute remaining, so the Rams will have time to generate some offense if they should so desire. They have their timeouts remaining. And Parsley throwing to Asher Armstrong, but I don't know if he made it. It's going to be very close. Clock is running, 47, 46, 45. No one's called time. And now at 43 seconds, we'll have a measurement. It's going to be very close, as you said. Eddie Biles, head coach, new head coach, giving folks an indication right away. He's not afraid to take a few gambles. Well thrown pass by Parsley. Yes, it was. Fine pass. Adger Armstrong, a uh, little used back. Looked to me like he went down ahead of that marker. They have to bring the chains from across the field to measure. Here it is again. Parsley's first ever NFL pass, and he hit his man perfectly, but did he get enough yardage? A little smile from Eddie Biles. Well, even if he did, there's a lot of yardage between uh, where the ball is and the goal line. 
they would like, of course, to. Yes, they do. They got the first down. They got a chance to get inside field goal range at least. So Parsley keeps the drive alive, one for one. There's your maybe your only 1,000 percentage passer in the NFL career. He has not kicked the ball that well today. Maybe uh, maybe it's good that he completed that pass. <laughs> so Eddie Biles charging his troops with 37 seconds, 36. The clock is running. It was stopped for the measurement. 17 to 6, the Rams lead. First half coming to a close. Stabler can't get rid of it. Down he goes at the 50. That's the first sack for the Rams. Young blood and panning. Number 90, Larry Brooks, also in on that sack. That's what you fondly uh, recall as a defensive lineman. Turn him loose. Clock is come. running. Stabler back to live action. Down the middle. Renfro at the 33-yard line. Whistle sounds with seven seconds left. Leroy Irvin made the tackle. A flag is down. He'll back where Stabler threw the ball. Could be a hold, could be a rough. Let's see. Apparently against Houston. Holding. 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 Now the pass would have given Frisch a chance at another long field goal. And that'll just about deny the Oilers any chance except on this final desperation play. The Houston Oilers very happy to have double zero. Kenny Burrow back in the lineup. Missed 14 games last year. Number 62, John Schumacher from the University of Southern California. Did not play in 79 nor last year because of a back injury. Was a 12th round pick and uh, has persevered. He would not give up and now is a starter in that Oiler line. Let's see if maybe Stabler doesn't go to his deep man, Kenny Burrow, double zero on this one. Should be the last play unless there's a penalty of this first half. Little screen to Campbell. 45, 50, 40. Shirt tailed out of bounds at the 36 yard line. A flag is down, but I believe against the Oilers. If so, the half is over. If it's against the Rams, then the Oilers will have another play. I believe it's against John Schumacher again. Looked like it was thrown right in the area where he was blocking. Holding on the offense, number 55. No. The half is over. Carl Mock ticketed in the screen blocking. So Pat Hayden with a couple of touchdown passes, one 67 yards to Wendell Tyler, another a 19-yard bullet to tight end Walt Arnold, and he's telling his teammates that he's happy with the first 30 minutes of play, and so are the fans here in Anaheim. An interesting first half. Uh, lots of scoring coming off mistakes. Two missed cues by the Rams, interceptions. Uh, double field goals by the Houston Oilers. Of course, the Rams taking advantage of that Earl Campbell fumble to put themselves some insurance points on the board. So at the end of the first half, here before sellout crowd in sunny Anaheim, California, it's the Los Angeles Rams 17, Houston Oilers 6. Mike. Off, what grabs your eye? Well, a couple of things. The yards rushing, an obvious... Uh, mistake in most games uh, 38 yards for the Oilers usually they warm up on the first part of the first quarter with that the Rams have 100 yards and the other big difference you don't see it there but the uh, third down efficiency Houston one of eight and 12 percent the Rams uh, four of seven almost 60 percent and I think that has been the difference Houston just has not been able to convert on third downs uh, passing very even 7 of 13 7 of 13 turnovers and of course we talked about the fact that all three resulted in points being scored so the Oilers trailing 17 to 6 Corral kicks it off second half underway Tullis will let it go out of bounds and that'll cost the Rams five yards and Corral will kick it again I know some of you while we were away at halftime uh, we're not with NFL 81 had your local news so we'll run down all the scores for you here early in the second half Rams scoring first and led 7-0, uh, then 7-3 in the first quarter. 
A couple of long field goals by Frisch made it 7-6. Then Corral a field goal before Hayden in the last uh, two minutes hit Arnold a 19-yard pass and a 17-6 lead. Other finals, Kansas City beat Pittsburgh 37-33. Baltimore upset New England 29-28. It was Miami over St. Louis 20-7. Cincinnati down 21 to nothing in the first quarter. Rallied to beat the Seahawks 27-21. The Eagles mauled the Giants 24-10. It wasn't that close. Dallas handled Washington 26-10. Atlanta blanked New Orleans 27-0. Detroit beat the 49ers 24-17. And it was Green Bay. Bart Starr's team had a good summer, and they upset the Bears in Chicago 16-9 today. Denver leads Oakland 9-7 in the first half. It's Buffalo 10, the Jets nothing in the first half. So you have to date on all the scores. Corral kicks it again. The rookie Tullis at the 8. 25. And they stretched out the defense, but he could not turn the corner as Harrison Urban made the stop for the Rams. So Ken Stabler brings his offense onto the field. He'll have Mark, the veteran center, with Schumacher and Fisher, the guards, Gray and Towns, the tackles. We'll see whether it's Barber or Casper tight end. It's Dave Casper, although Barber started at that position. Renfro, one wide receiver, Ken Burrow, the other. And in the backfield, Earl Campbell and Rob Carpenter. Ram defense, Fanning and Brooks to tackle, Youngblood and Jones, the ends. Linebackers, Jim Youngblood, Eckert and Andrews. Pat Thomas and Rod Perry at the corners, Johnson and Cromwell at safety. juggling the ball and Malavesi burning the ears of the official a 23 yard play our angle bad from here but perhaps you'll get a better shot from this angle behind the camera watch his feet now he needs to touch both feet down after getting that ball he's still reaching for control at that point well I'd say maybe these officials are trying to atone for that one lousy call they gave their Rams earlier in the game Dick. <laughs> down at the 49 of Los Angeles as Houston with a break. They trail 17 to 6. Flag down. Barber unable to find the ball at the 37 yard line. Appears to be a hold against Houston. It is. Towns has earned his second holding penalty of the game working on Jack Youngblood. Youngblood appears to be getting back into form a little bit. Jack Youngblood, number 85, in his 11th year with the Rams after they picked him number one out of the University of Florida back in 1971. Had 11 sacks last year to lead Los Angeles. Defensive player of the year in the NFC twice. Number 76. And Mo Towns gets the 10-yard ticket. One of Jack's good friends on the other sideline, a story in his own right, John Reeves back quarterback uh, who may well play a big picture for these Houston Oilers during this season. Well, nice, nice to see a guy get a second chance, Dick. Absolutely. Really like absolutely. You know, there's something about sports that uh, never closes the door on someone who perseveres. And Reeves has done that, rallying from his own personal problems. Not fooled a bit, the Ram defense, as they've done a good job in checking Earl Campbell, Larry Brooks from Virginia State Petersburg. Five consecutive Pro Bowls for number 90. He made the play. He and Jack Youngblood, very close friends, and uh, also partners in a Western goods store here in Southern California. Look at Campbell's to only 26 yards for the man who has been the leading rusher in the NFL each of the last three years. There might be a little redesigning going on on this Houston offense if uh, they don't get some yards here in the second half.
see if it was on Perry or Thomas. Face pass on a defense, on a tackle, that's a five-yard penalty, and a first down. Let's see which one. There it is, right there. It's on 27. It's on Pat Thomas coming in late. Watch him coming from the backside. Now, he is not allowed to even put his hands on that mask. Had it been a flagrant use of that mask on the tackle, it would have been 15 yards. That's a five-yard penalty, and rightfully called by the official. Nice coverage. Two good angles. Carpenter caught in the backfield by Jim Youngblood and then smothered by the rest of the Rams. But it was 53, Youngblood, who once wrestled Gentle Ben the Bear in high school, and he did a pretty good job of wrapping up Carpenter. Well, we said at the beginning of our game today that neither of these defensive teams who are traditionally powerhouses in their respective leagues had played that well in the preseason. The Rams appear to have gotten their act together, have played extremely well in this ball game so far, and, and that would appear to be the difference so far in this game, Dick. They've checked the Oiler running game. Two minutes into the second half, it's second and 14. That's Casper, pushed out of bounds by Cromwell at the Ram 43-yard line. Shy of the first down. How many times have we seen that duo in other uniforms making this same kind of play? Stabler under pressure, finding his favorite receiver, Casper, and Casper making a, a Casper catch. He just finds a way to get open and finds a way to get that football. And although it looks simple enough because he made it look easy, when that ball's down below your waist, that's a tough catch. The great players make it look easy, Dick, and sometimes as a result, they don't get the kind of recognition they deserve. So third down and a long yard as the Oilers trying to overcome that first down holding penalty. Toss to Campbell. Hit some blocks. And a first down to the 37 of Los Angeles. And Nolan Cromwell was the last white uniform in the path of Campbell. Cromwell, who was a 400-meter hurdles champ in the Big 8, ran a 49-5, a Big 8 record at the time, and also in the decathlon, and he's shown that he's such a complete athlete working at that safety spot for the Rams. That's a very talented secondary. And the, the emphasis now with the, the new rules, put the, what's the... Uh, the onus on speed. If you don't have speed behind that line, you've got real trouble. The Rams have a very fast defensive secondary. Campbell, and as he popped into George Andrews, number 52. So Andrews at 223, and he caught Campbell before he gets started. You don't see Campbell bounce back very often. Well, George Andrews better put this in his highlight file. You don't get many shots like that on Earl Campbell. Normally, the guys who bounce like that are the defenders he's running over. Andrews out of Nebraska, line performer who's fit in very well to this defense, just had the angle, took advantage of it, and loved Earl Campbell. A loss of two, second and 12 at the Ram 40. We're in the third quarter, three and a half minutes gone. The Oilers have taken the kickoff to start the half and have marched to this position. Out of the backfield, Carpenter hit immediately at the 38-yard line, a gain of just a couple. George Andrews again. Well, Indeed, Merlin Olson. Mr. Andrews has a couple of pages in his book. First a hit on Campbell, and then only a two-yard gain on the pass. One of the problems that the Oilers had last year, they completed a lot of passes, but they weren't getting the average yardage that you need. You've got to get more than two yards on a pass to make it worthwhile for you. Stadler, I'm sure, will be looking a little deeper, but does not have the velocity to get the ball as deep as he could early in his career. Looks like the Rams may have a linebacker coming. They do. Joe Harris, he's picked off, pass is complete to Renfro, but Rod Perry stops him shy of the first down. Now Stabler will look to what has been the Houston offense so far, Tony Frisch again. But that play again, typical of the kind of teamwork you need between quarterback and receiver. Stabler under pressure, and Renfro sensing that, coming back to the ball. They are going to go for it, apparently. Fourth and five, down by 11 points. Biles figures a field goal, still keeps them outside a touchdown and an extra point. So the Oilers will go for it. Interesting choice. He gambled early with a pass out of punt formation, and now going for it on fourth down. Fourth and five.
six for six on the drive. Kenny Stabler doing exactly what his coach wanted him to do. Finds the open man, a very steady receiver, Rob Carpenter. That's a fine catch in traffic. Rams colliding with each other and sliding right on the end zone. Frisch to try the extra point out of Ryan Feltz hole. So Houston scoring on its first possession right back into the game. Whoops. Contact. And we'll see against whom. Might have been Mike Fanning. Two very uncharacteristic gambles for head coaches in the NFL. Unusual for them to, to go for that kind of play. There's the snake. A 33-yard pass to Carpenter. Defense made contact via five-yard penalty on the kickoff. You wonder what Eddie Biles had going through his mind as that particular play was being played. We'll give you a little feeling for that. We'll show you what he did one right after this kick. <laughs> I, I told you that, all was, time. that was I, one of those I told you so uh, <laughs> waves. That won't be back in Anaheim. 9.51 left, third quarter. Bell 81. It's as hard hit. And the 10th play of the drive came on fourth down and five. 33 yard touchdown play. Stabler to that man, Preston. Not Preston. Carpenter, Rob Carpenter, going back a ways to call him Preston. Tony Frisch kicks it deep, and Drew Hell lets it go. Frisch has shown every touch on the kickoff. He's hit it high left, high right, short, high, and deep and low, and drove it over Hill's head. He told, uh, told his coaches, you just tell me how you want to kick. I'll kick it that way. Doesn't have to be deep, but if you want it deep, I'll get it deep. 38-year-old elf from Vienna. First game he saw in the NFL, he kicked two field goals of over 40 yards. I wonder if he'll challenge uh, Blanda's record of playing until he's 49. <laughs> I've always wondered about this, Merlin, whether as an offensive player or a defensive player, uh, you get ready for the second half, then suddenly the other team generates a long, time-consuming drive. It's been about 15, 20 minutes since the Ram offense has taken the field at the half. How does that affect them? It hurts you. It hurts you to sit. And the other thing that hurts you is uh, when a team comes out uh, that has been outplayed in the first half and puts as much of a drive together as they did, as convincing a drive as Houston did, turns the momentum around up to the Ram offense if they can to get their team back on the scoreboard again, turn the momentum again. Second and eight is Hayden to throw. Little screen to Tyler. And he's hammered at the 28-yard line. Prior to that play, you saw a close-up on the sidelines of number 77, Angelo Fields of the Houston Oilers. 6'6 and 318 pounds this field from Michigan State. We actually have two of the very biggest players in the NFL in this uh, game. Fields, who has not had a chance to play much, and, and until he loses a little more weight, I doubt that Eddie Biles will give him a chance. On the other side of the field, we've got a, a six foot five inch, 310 pounder, Phil Murphy, who has had a chance to play, although he's nursing a bad ankle right now. You could hide Tony Frisch in Fields uniform. Sure could. Tyler on third and two, and he's got the first down. of covering that football. We had talked earlier about the difficulty he's had during his career with fumbles. He has not fumbled the ball today. But you see it there. You see him carrying that ball loosely in the open field. But at least he's learned to tighten it up, pull it in as he gets into traffic. Graham 17, Houston 13, first down. Here, Merlin. Dick, I don't think Hayden is seeing 
those linebackers. I think he's just seeing his receivers, and I don't think he's seeing those blue shirts come in there. That's the third interception today, and certainly a fine play by Bingham, but a pass that never should have been thrown. Payton zipped the ball. But Bingham just uh, there at plenty of time. I don't know that uh, that Hayden is seeing the defenders as well as he's going to have to. So Houston trailing by four, a chance to get the lead. Burrow, touchdown! Burrow split between Thomas and Cromwell, and Stabler is threading it through for a touchdown. The Rams being reminded very forcefully that football is a four apparently on their laurels in the first half they've been shocked with two quick touchdowns from Kenny Stabler and that one a deep shot to Kenny Burrow Stabler he's thrown nine times this half nine straight completions Cromwell that was kind of an interesting move all of a sudden went right by and Burrow cut in behind him apparently Cromwell felt somebody else had that coverage Just a little over a minute. Houston has 14 points. Let's see if we can see what happened to Cromwell. I think Cromwell was was on Kenny Burrow. I think he's actually just overcovered him. He's ahead of Kenny Burrow, doing too good a job of covering. Ball thrown behind him. Burrow sucks it in for the TD. Bingham's interception, 20-yard touchdown. Houston leads by three. Ken Stabler, number 12. He's been in camp just a week and a half. He's thrown two touchdowns here in this third quarter. And Houston now leads for the first time 2017. And Drew Hill will not run out the long kickoff by Tony Frisch. So the old man can still put a good leg to it at 68 yards in the air. And on the touchback, Rams have it at the 20-yard line. And Hayden is booed as he comes on the field. very difficult for him in his home park to have his own fans wrapped around his neck. That's just an extra weight for him to carry on to that field. Hayden with two touchdown passes and three interceptions. The three interceptions have led to two field goals and a touchdown, costing 13 points. That's Waddy in motion. And Tyler, good block. to get down at field level put on your helmet you'll see 72 leading this play and it gets tangled up right there but continues right on over the top now crucial block right there on jc wilson number 33 a bulldog on him number 26 tyler busting to the outside around ryan felt vernon perry finally riding about number 32 of the order 12 yards on the play first down and it's cullen bryant running through a tackle and a flag goes down Seven. Hunt 
was a very small linebacker when he came out of Oklahoma. Only about 220, 225 pounds. Has beefed himself up considerably and is doing a fine job for the Houston Oilers in the middle. Number 51, Ted Thompson comes in in a pass. Plus one at second and nine. Stabler is nine for the last nine. So he's on a hot streak. The all-time record, Burt Jones completed 17 in a row. Tyler met by Daryl Hutt, number 50, from Oklahoma after a short game. It'll be third and about seven. Hutt was a very small linebacker when he came out of Oklahoma. Only about 220, 225 pounds. Has beefed himself up considerably and is doing a fine job for the Houston Oilers in the middle. Number 51, Ted Thompson comes in in a pass situation. So does Carter Hartwig, a fifth defensive back. The Rams look at third down. Call it eight. Interesting, too, how the emotional level for the defensive team seems to jump as their offense puts some more points on the board. Turn call at nine on a 38 yard kick. So Houston with the ball again. The third quarter has been to the Oilers. They lead by three. I like that picture. Dreyer said, hey, quit going. Let's get up there. He started to become a cheerleader. You're not going to play me. I want the Rams to win. These are my friends, and he's got the whole crowd on its feet. Fred Dreyer becomes a cheerleader. Pretty expensive one. you do very difficult I'm sure for Ray Malavese who wanted to make it possible for Fred to step aside gracefully it just didn't work that way and I'm sure it is painful for Freddie to be on the sideline he's been playing he's been a regular for so many years and not to be in the game and yet to have to be ready to play and then to have to stand on the sideline extremely difficult third and five Oilers lead at 20 to 17 third quarter four minutes left draw play to Campbell Bubble! and the Rams Cromwell has it. Well, you talk about dexterity. Cromwell felt that ball roll right underneath his feet and just quickly spun around, put his hands on it, pulled it up. Second fumble for Campbell today. First one resulted in a touchdown. Let's see what happens with this one. And credit Joe Harris, number 51, with a tackle. The Rams have the ball. Oh, Cam. 
fumble, jarred free of the football. Rams have recovered. Other scores, Kansas City over Pittsburgh, 37-33. We'll get the ball in after this play. Hayden has a man open, Cullen Bryant. His momentum takes him out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Close to a first down. All right, all the rest of the scores today in the NFL. First week of play, 15 more to go. Baltimore, surprise, defeats New England 29-28. It was Miami. They won all four preseason games, beat St. Louis at St. Louis today. Cincinnati rallied from 21-0 down to a victory. Philadelphia showed its power against the Giants, 24-10. Dallas eased past Washington, 26-10. More after this play. Second and one. Tyler. Across the 35, a first down at the 34 of the Oilers. Scoreboard for you. Atlanta flexing its muscle blanks New Orleans 27-0. Detroit victorious against the 49ers by a touchdown. Green Bay, Bart Starr really had him going this summer. The whip out and he gets a win in the first regular season game at Chicago 16-9. And partial scores. In the third quarter, Denver 9, Oakland 7, as they work on Andy Doris, the injured oiler. Den I believe that that might be the happiest man in the park right now, Kenny Stabler. Meanwhile, Pat Hayden trying to turn the booze to cheers. First down play. Swings it out to Bryant, gets a block. 30, 25, 20, flag down. And Bryant finally ridden down at the six-yard line. But we may have a penalty against the Rams to call it back a shame because Cullen Bryant did a masterful job of getting his hands on that football and avoiding the traffic. Looks like an illegal block or illegal use of hands by one of his blockers, however, that's going to nullify that excellent play and an excellent call, I might add, by, by uh, Pat Hayden. One of the penalties they're calling more and more, it's not a clipping call, they're calling it illegal use of the hands where they're pushing the player from behind in the back. It's not a 15-yard penalty, but a 10, whereas they were calling it 15 yards last year because it was a block from behind. If it's the hands above the waist, it's just a 10-yard penalty. Holding offense number 72. This was just a regular good old-fashioned 10-yard hold by Kent Hill. Alavesi is shaking his head. We talked about the 31 penalties in two weeks, but watch watch the play here. Watch the, the play right there as, as uh, Bryant avoids that traffic and then picks the hole and accelerates blowing through traffic, doing a fine job. I, he has really been impressive today and continues to improve as a running back. Rather an amazing player. First down 20 from the 44. Tyler across the middle. Eluded a couple of blue shirts, but pays the price at the 40-yard line. Bingham, J.C. Wilson, 33, and on the stop. Hayden trying to work underneath the secondary of the Houston Oilers. But that brings Tyler right into contact with some of those big linebackers. And Bingham that smashed him. And again, watch the football as Tyler pulls it in. We've talked about the way it's held loosely. Very dangerous. Let's see what he does with it here as he grabs it. Look at that football. Out like a loaf of bread. Boy, that's... <laughs> Sitting at home, if you're playing high school or Pop Warner football or college ball, that's not the way to do it. Second down and 15. Fly and down at the 45-yard line. Washington Reds. Right side of the Ram line off before the snap of the ball. Looked like Saul. Uh, looked like the center may have been a little late on that one. The whole right side moved early. Ball start on the offense. Anyway, the Oilers undoubtedly will decline that, take the penalty, waste it down. There's an interesting comparison, uh, Merlin. Ray Malavese's Wendell Tyler has 162 yards in offense, passing and rushing. Earl Campbell, 19 carries, only 36 yards and two fumbles for the Oilers. Yet, Houston leads 2017. Well, the reason they lead, oddly enough, the passing of Ken Stabler. Nine for nine in this half still, Joe. He's completed his last nine passes. Ball at the 44. And they took the penalty, surprisingly. Second down at the 44-yard line. 
Well, it was actually a false start before the snap. They had no choice. They had to take the penalty. Looking for a pass, Carter Hartwig, the fifth defensive back in for the Oilers. Waddy in motion. Going long for Denard. No, did not get both feet in. And you saw the Oilers defensive back, Greg Semerick, right there applauding the call. An excellent pattern. Fine pass. The only thing they did wrong is not get two feet in. Watch the shot here on the sideline. One foot down, second foot just on the line. Had Denard been able to get that second foot down a little bit shorter, only a matter of inches, that would indeed have been a reception. Watch Temerick, 27, as he, well, we didn't quite get all of the end of that play as he applauded the official. Ray Malavasi hardly in that mood. Third and 20. lead. The Oilers have a three-point advantage, 20 to 17. Carl Roach is back at the 12 as Corral punts. Good kick. Roach is dangerous. Six-yard line. Side steps one man. And that same man comes back to make the tackle at the 13-yard line. There was number 23, Lucius Smith, a free agent pick out of Cal State Fullerton, just down the highway from Anaheim Stadium. Break in the action, we'll return. During the commercial break, Freddie Dreyer applauding the reaction of the fans who were cheering and chanting, we want Dreyer. I, I've got to think at this point, that becomes a harmful uh, interplay for the Rams team. Uh, it was all right for him to get him going to cheer the Rams, but for him to applaud the fact that they were chanting, we want Dreyer, I don't like that. He might be hurting his own case with that part of the deck. Ball at the Houston 13-yard line. The Oilers, with two touchdowns here in the third quarter, enjoy the lead by three. Stabler, remember, has completed nine in a row. Woo! Rob Carpenter almost broke into the clear, and he knew it. He had one man to beat, but Pat Thomas tenaciously made the tackle at the 19. It was nothing but clear sailing downfield down at field level chance to feel it be right there with Rob Carpenter watch him spin away from the first tackle of Johnny Johnson but right there Thomas just bulldog him excellent play by the little cornerback that saved the touchdown a gain of about five Rob Carpenter who caught a touchdown from Stabler 33 yards earlier in this quarter Earl Campbell a big hole showing on the clock. Apparently they're having some difficulty with the clock. And they're just going to let it run now. Well, if Pat Hayden is replaced in the very first game of the regular season, won't they be writing stories again this week in the Los Angeles and Orange County newspapers? Ken Stabler, meanwhile, has enjoyed an outstanding third period. A couple of touchdown passes, and the Oilers lead the Rams 20 to 17. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. 
just moments ago Hayden had his head bowed apparently he knows that Jeff Rutledge is going to be the quarterback in the next series another lonely moment for Hayden who is intercepted three times two touchdown passes meanwhile Houston as we open the fourth quarter with a 20 to 17 lead first down play Campbell breaking a tackle to get to the 43 yard line we have not been able to bring you the usual number of NFL 81 updates, highlights from other games because of difficulties with telephone company AT&T. And we're sorry that we're not able to give you those great plays from elsewhere in the National Football League, but thus far, the phone company has not been able to resolve their problems. Elsewhere, it's Denver 9, Oakland 7 in the fourth quarter. That would be a major upset, and Buffalo breezing past the Jets 31-0. Everyone felt the Jets were on the men going to really start fast but Chuck Knox's Bills had other thoughts today second and six Campbell with some running room Johnny Johnson saved the touchdown this time that's three times in this series that the last Ram tackler has been able to bring down the ball carrier first Carpenter and now twice it's Campbell breaking into the clear Earl Campbell contained so well in the first half. It just exploded here in the second half, making the most of the running room he can get down that sideline and showing you the kind of speed that is so incredible for a back that size. I want to make one statistical correction, Merlin. Stabler has completed his last eight. We forgot Cliff Parsley oh, had one right. of those completions in there. So eight for eight for Stabler, who has no thoughts of passing apparently now the way the running game is geared up. Larry Brooks ninth through to make the tackle for a loss on Carpenter. Well, again, Stabler showing his experience. He's got his lead, and he also has begun to get some, some ground out of his running game, and he knows that if he keeps that ball on the ground, he eats the clock. And right now, if he can do that and maintain control of the football, he takes away the opportunity for the Rams to do anything. Second and 12. great athlete he is checked for the first half did not have a good half and suddenly is just ripping the ram defense apart at the seams here in the second half you saw george andrews knock campbell down earlier watch campbell get even he knocks about three or four rams down on this play i don't think that we'll ever see a more punishing runner than earl campbell was in his rookie year his first year and he's not much less punishing today 1,081 yards in his first three seasons. And he's close to the 100-yard mark today. Third and four. Campbell on the draw. Stopped at the line of scrimmage and then tackled before he could make the first down yardage. Cody Jones and Mike Fanning made the play for the Rams. Here comes Tony Frisch and the field goal unit for Houston. This will be a long shot for him. Close to a 50-yarder. Frisch, a 50-yard field goal in the first quarter and came back with a 41-yard connection in the second. The line of scrimmage, the 27, if the Oilers kick. Reinfeldt kneeling at the 35, a 45-yard attempt. has the ball taken right out of his hands by a fellow member of that defensive unit. And the Rams deny Frisch a three-pointer. Someone leaping high behind the line of scrimmage to bat it down. Jack Youngblood, number 85. The man who got his hands up. Knocked that football away. Now let's see if that turns the momentum. Got the crowd back in it as the Rams' young blood blocks the three-point play. New quarterback for Los Angeles, Rutledge, when we return. 11.53 left. Brian Dumble in New York at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. The Bills are pouring it on the lowly Jets. Roosevelt Leaks doing the honors from a yard out. It is now 31-0. Bills out in front. Dick, Merlin. Brian on the sidelines. 
head bow Pat Hayden. Jeff Rutledge is the new quarterback. Merlin, the leadership of the team it's geared so much to the play of the quarterback and here already in the first game, Hayden out. I've got a feel, though, that Malavasi is so concerned about Hayden's inability to keep from making that mistake, throwing that interception, that he's willing to make a change this early. Rutledge played very well against the Dallas Cowboys, throwing strikes, playing extremely well against the tough defense. Let's see what he can do here. Houston leads 20 to 17. Rutledge to Tyler. He is met by Ted Washington, 59. Also in on the play, Greg Bingham at the 30-yard line. Dick, the whole tempo of this game has changed, though. Uh, the Oiler defense has come alive here in the second half. Uh, certainly the Ram defense has gone to sleep, and the Ram offense, so productive in the first half, has been able, unable to do anything here. Rams led at the half, 17-6. But Houston took the kickoff to start the second half, marched for a long touchdown, 33-yard play to Carpenter. It was a fourth-and-five play, by the way. Flag down. game that Houston down 17 to 6 uh, did not go for the field goal but on fourth and five Stabler passed to Carpenter for a touchdown then an interception by Bingham and on the very first play Stabler hit Burrow 20 yards for a score and suddenly Houston had jumped into the lead 2017. Jeff Rutledge on that last play is going to get a little bit of an initiation from number 52 Robert Brazil that the Oilers were offsides and uh, themselves marked up for it. Wham. Hello. Elvin Bethay, 65. Too quick on the snap. Offside. Second and two and a half. Tyler, trouble getting his balance, does drive to the 36-yard line. He'll be short of a first down by a yard. Well, Paul Bear Bryant. His Bama team a winner again last night against LSU and got two of his pupils on the field. Pat Hayden, of course, not one of them. Jeff Rutledge, a graduate of Bama in 79, and of course, Ken Stabler in 1879. Now, the snake who has played very well today. 68 was picked by the Oakland Raiders. Number 62, Bill Bain, has gone in at tight end. Big offensive guard to give him some more blocking power. Let's see if they go to the big fullback, Brian. Colin Bryant. Tyler just about broke it loose. You often see that on a short sure yardage play. Everyone up tight. And if you can't pop loose, they've got to run you down from behind. You know, Stabler doesn't make himself look very attractive, but everyone who's known him and played with him, basically, they really like him as a man. He's a cliche, a man's man. Rutland. Dumbling, New York, and Mile High Stadium in Denver. The Broncos continue to surprise the Raiders. Jim Plunkett operating behind his offensive line, down by two under a heavy rush. Tries to throw it sidearm, intercepted by Larry Evans. Raiders still trail 9-7. Dick? Thank you, Brian. Here in Anaheim, Houston 20, the Rams 17. You see the time remaining, less than 10 minutes. Ray Malavasi's team at the 20 of Houston. First down. Rentley's the quarterback. Total for Tyler. Greg Bingham, who was shaken up on the pass play. 
by Rutledge to Childs of 39 yards comes back into the lineup for Houston. Bingham, who is starting now in his 126th consecutive game, he's the diehard battery, never fails to start. No, he sure does it. Playing right now with a finger that's been operated on, splinted together, got a couple of pins in it. He doesn't even slow down. Second and five at the 15. now with Hayden out of the game is calling the plays by signals is he not or is he sending in well, he's sending in players he also can signal and probably a combination of both Frank Corral now loosening up his leg he may get the call if they don't pick up this first down at the 13 third and three Waddy right Denard left consecutive games apparently will end today in uniform but apparently really not a part of the Rams plans. Pat Hayden out of the game. Lack of performance. Jeff Rutledge has replaced him and Ken Stabler has had a good game. Helped by this man Earl Campbell who gets five on first down. Dreyer who wants to play yet obviously knows the Rams do not have plans for him except the fact that he has a contract worth over $200,000 that he says, hey, you, you said you wouldn't cut me or wave me. And Stabler, who said he had retired, changed his mind, and back he comes under a cloud of controversy. Oh, he certainly has played well. 20 to 17, Houston. seconds left in the game. Campbell has 100 yards on 26 carries. He is amazing. An off day and he has his 100 already. And looking for a first down. And more. 40. And all the way to the 50-yard line goes Earl Campbell. But Tyler Rose is down. But perhaps more from exhaustion than an injury, although he was I hit hard to the side. I think he's hurt. He did not see Rod Perry from the outside. Perry took his leg out from underneath him with a low tackle, which is the only way to try and tackle Earl, but I think maybe he's hurt. 123 yards now after that gallop to the 49-yard line. Watch Perry come back from the outside. You did not see, he did not see Perry at all. Number 49, Perry had been taken out of the play. Another shot. Now watch the leg right right from the outside from the right side of your screen right there oh okay well 
that that's not nearly as frightening to see it from that side because it probably is a bruise rather than a torn knee but still he took a heavy shot on the leg his foot was not planted the thing you would worry about had that foot been planted and he'd taken that shot he might have torn the knee but it seemed the other knee the knee away from the contact it really buckled that's possible too that's the franchise that eddie viles is dealing over Okay, Dick, new head coach Dan Rees inherited a great defense from Red Miller when he took over this Denver unit. It is still containing the Oakland Raiders. Here, Kenny King loses the handle, and Don Latimer comes up with it. Broncos threatening the pad, a 9-7 lead. Dick? Thank you, Bryant. Earl Campbell, the good news, on his feet. Boy, did he take a lick. And you can see now how important it is for the athlete to know where the contact is coming from. He did not see the man who hit him. And, of course, that, in that relaxed manner, really took a pop. Campbell has great vision. But look at him. He's expecting all the action from the inside. Did not see Perry from the outside and was not prepared for that shot. Again, from, from another low camera angle, you see the, the hit right there. He's lucky he was not more seriously injured. Adger Armstrong replaces him, and Armstrong, on his first carry, goes to the 44-yard line. Nolan Cromwell with a tackle. That was Armstrong's first ever NFL rush, and he gets a solid seven. So the Oilers chewing up the clock. It ticks down to the five-minute mark, and Ray Malavesi, after his team missed the short field goal of 29 yards, it would have tied it, showing some concern. Renfro breaks huddle to the left, Burrow to the right, the tight end, Casper on the left side. Armstrong stays in with Tim Wilson. It's Wilson. So the 42-yard line is going to be very close to a first down. Carl Eckner made the tackle. Johnny Johnson on the assist. As we said before, the start of the game, interestingly, migrating toward each other. Dreyer met Stabler. They talked, and Hayden came in. The three men who have had to battle controversy, and they're on the Rams sidelines, the two figures alone, alone in essence in their own grief. One of our best friends in the picture also, Chuck Benedict, longtime sportscaster out here, a man who helped me get a start a long time ago. Third and short, crucial down for the Ram defense. They'd love to force the... Houston Oilers offense to make a decision here on fourth down. Armstrong fumbles. And let's see, the Rams were all around the ball. And they're still wrestling for it in that pile. It looked like one of the Rams had it early, but at the bottom of that pile, there's a lot of fighting going on for that football, let me tell you. two men both have a grasp on the football it's a matter of <laughs> which has the advantage <laughs> no, nobody wants to admit that the other the other person has the football you better believe there are about a dozen arms around that football at the bottom of that stack their 40-yard line. Surprisingly, the report from the field is that Campbell injured his shoulder on that tackle. So has Rob Carpenter. So with his two starting backs wounded, Eddie Biles has a problem, although it did appear Campbell was going to come into play had that not been a fumble. And Jeff Rutledge has another opportunity to move the Ram offense down the field. Got to believe that the Houston defense is really stoked, though. They're angry. They did not feel that that ball was possessed by the Los Angeles Rams. Timeout with three minutes and 49 seconds left. The Rams trailing by three, 20 to 17 to the Houston Oilers. Frank Corral. He could be a very key figure in these final minutes. Denver still leading Oakland in the fourth quarter, 9-7. The Buffalo steamrolling the Jets, 31-0 in the fourth. And Jeff Rutledge, the backup quarterback to Hayden, on first down. To Denard. Tackle at the Houston 47, very close to a first down. Preston Denard set in motion from the outside. 
side, forcing a change in the secondary. But watch him. He cuts up before he hits the line of scrimmage, before he goes across the center and finds an open spot. And that ball is just ripped to him. Greg Bingham quickly in to get a piece of the tackle. But they've given him the first down. Rams on the ball again. From the Houston 46. one and the Rams at least in a position for a field goal tie. Back at Anaheim Stadium, two minutes left. The Kenberg and Merlin Olsen were pleased you're with us here on NBC Sports for our football doubleheader on opening day. Some upsets around the NFL and Houston Oilers trying to add to that list as they have the Rams down 20 to 17 but Los Angeles in position at the Houston 27 second down and 12. Jeff Rutledge, number eight, in relief of Pat Hayden, who threw two touchdown passes, but also was guilty of three interceptions. Again, great protection down the middle. Incomplete at the six-yard line. Carter Hartwick, 36, Reinfeld, 37, Wilson, 33, Bingham, 54, as Drew Hill drew a crowd. in the game for the Rams. And I've got to believe that a more 
more experienced quarterback would have gone to a, an outlet receiver in that situation and picked up four or five yards. Rutledge going with the original philosophy of the play, trying to get deep, threw into a crowd, almost got it intercepted. Denard and Waddy right. Will, Willie Miller is on the left side. Three wide receivers being used by the Rams on third and 12. Over the middle again, and open is Waddy at the 19, but that's going to be short of the first down. Dennis Herrick coming downfield to help out with a block on Brazil. So here comes Corral with a second chance. Ball at the 19. It's fourth down and three. This will be a 36-yard attempt. He missed from 29. With one and a half left, the Rams go for a tie, hoping to force overtime. Cromwell, a great athlete to hold. Cromwell has run for a touchdown out of field goal thing. 36 yards away from a tie. time to work on the two-minute offense and I'm sure there have been some changes in that two-minute offense that may hurt them here in this uh, last part of the fourth quarter although he, if he can get in range for Tony Frisch Tony has a powerful leg might be the deciding factor in this ballgame you think of the 33 yard line forces a 40 yard placement or a 50 yard field goal so 33 is about the magic spot that Houston would like to drive to to give at least a long chance, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Tullus and Roaches are deep. Corral high and fairly deep. Tullus at the sixth, five-yard line, make it. He breaks into the clear. Might go all the way at the 40. He is going to go all the way for a touchdown. Rook point and now it's the Rams with 57 seconds left trailing by a touchdown Willie Tullis Troy State how do you do we don't have to add much to that kind of play it tells the story visually Leroy Irvin number 47 the man who has the last shot at it we welcome the Oakland Denver audience on NBC just seeing a Denver Bronco upset and you're about to see another here at Anaheim Stadium. 
That is Willie Tullis, an eighth round draft pick of the Houston Oilers. In a 2020 tie, Tullis has just taken a kickoff after Corral had tied the game on a field goal, taking the kickoff 95 yards for a touchdown. And Houston leads 27-20 with 57 seconds left. And look at the smiles on the Houston sideline. Leon Gray, 74. And now it's the Rams' turn. And they have a dangerous return man, Drew Hill, who returned one on opening day last year, 98 yards for a touchdown against the Lions. He's deep. to kick off. Hill. It would be 101. But is not even to the 20-yard line. Well covered. And look who made the tackle. Dave Casper on the special team. An all-pro tight end on the special team. And he was hurt on that tackle. Let's see the 217th draft pick. Somebody knew something. Willie Tullis. Tullis had impressed these coaches with his desire to play and his speed. He'll leave a lasting impression on the Los Angeles Rams with this play. Carter Hartwig was the man who threw the block. Last block downfield. Rutledge completes it to Denard. Greg Bingham drags him down at the 35-yard line. The Rams had to use a timeout earlier in this quarter when Rutledge lost his shoe. They didn't want to hurry into the play, and now the clock working against them. They have two timeouts left, down to 34, 33. They don't use one. Rutledge in the hurry-up offense. Down the middle. Intercepted by the Houston Oilers, and that will just about do it. It appeared to be... in the first part of this camp or first part of the season training camp comes back makes a big play here to ice this victory for Eddie Biles in his first regular season start as a head coach and you can just feel the enthusiasm and excitement from that Oiler bench and Willie Tullis was the man who ignited that emotional spark what a story you know, there's many games reporters say when it's all over, what are we going to write about? Well, you could write for a week on this game, the developments before and during, and now the effect. Hayden benched for the reserve Rutledge, Stabler, and only 10 days of work, playing magnificently in the second half. A rookie from nowhere, Troy State. And no, listen, you folks that have gone to that fine institution, I mean, not a lot of folks know about you. And he is now the star as he gives the Oilers the win, 27 to 20, here at Anaheim Stadium. A disappointed Anaheim Stadium crowd, but a joyous band of Oilers with another NFL upset. Will it's almost like watching two different games. The first half convincingly uh, dominated by the Rams. The second half, though, totally dominated by the Oilers. Lots of upsets today. Kansas City beats Pittsburgh. Baltimore an upset over New England. Miami, no, they were figured, although a tough one at St. Louis. Cincinnati had to come from behind. Philadelphia won easily, so did Dallas. Atlanta, big win against New Orleans. Final Detroit, a touchdown win over San Francisco. Green Bay wins. So does Denver, an upset over the world champion Raiders. Buffalo breezing against the Jets. And here in Anaheim, Willie Tullis, a 95-yard kickoff return in the final minute to win it for Houston. Now stay tuned for Disney's Wonderful World, the barefoot executive scene in its entirety, except on the West Coast, most mountain time zones, where it will be seen at its regularly scheduled time. That's the story from Anaheim Stadium. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olson. Thank you for being with us. The Houston Oilers have beaten the Los Angeles Rams 27-20. A promotion fee has been paid for 12 Ken Stabler of the Houston Oilers. Now known mainly as a ball control passer, Stabler is the only quarterback with a career completion percentage of over 60%. Before Stabler came to Houston from Oakland, the snake was known for his long-range bomb which makes his career completion percentage all the more remarkable.
Last week, Kenny Stabler completed 65% of his passes against the Rams. This week, Harry, the Rams... Back, Pat Hayden also has Super Bowl aspirations. The only time Los Angeles was there, he was injured. Against the Oilers, the much maligned Hayden got his team off to a running start. two touchdown passes in the first half as the Rams offense picked up where it left off last season. Of course, Vince Ferragamo was the quarterback in 1980, a point Los Angeles fans have not allowed Hayden to forget. But at the end of the first half against Houston, it was Los Angeles 17 and the Oilers 6. The Oilers have a quarterback who's not only been to the Super Bowl, but who's led his team to victory there. Ken Stabler, 12 days out of retirement, calmly brought Houston back into the game, throwing two touchdown passes in the third quarter. 